Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to the Certification Training Module. This module is Isonus IP Bridge Install. Our course objectives are cover the typical installation tools needed for installing an IP bridge, cover the basic of wiring devices to the IP bridge, and cover the basic wiring of a Wiegand proximity reader. So let's take a quick look at our IP bridge again. Our install tools will be similar to a PowerNet install except that we're not installing these outside so we don't need such things as dielectric grease and silicone. The IP bridge is DIN mountable and you do need the DIN rail. There are no screw holes to mount it flat. The inputs and outputs function the same as the power net. The major difference here is that you have to jumper power to the lock relay and we have a Wiegand input for the card reader, whereas on a PowerNet we'd have to buy a WIM module in order to interface a Wiegand device to the PowerNet reader controller. If we're using 12 to 24 volt DC, then we'll need the additional power pigtail. IP bridge defaulting. There's a small pinhole reset button on the side of the IP bridge. Press and hold for approximately two seconds to reset the unit. Once the button is released, the door status LEDs will all turn amber. If they do not turn amber, it did not reset. Press and hold for approximately 10 seconds to default the unit. Hold the button down until the door status LEDs turn amber and then release. This resets addresses to default as well as the encryption and IP bridge password. Very similar to the PowerNet reader controller with the reset button on the back. Each door on the IP bridge has the same inputs and outputs as a power net. You have a door sense input that should be normally closed, and you have racks and auxiliary inputs that should be normally open. The lock relay will need a jumper from the common to the DC power as shown there by the red line. Important, when using an external DC power supply, that voltage will be provided on the DC terminals. So if you use a 24 volt DC power supply, you will have 24 volt DC on your DC and ground terminals at the top. When using PoE, it's always 12 volt DC. TTL outputs act just like the PowerNet and typically use a SRM to provide a form C relay. Our reader connections. The IP bridge will accept any Wiegand input. W0 is typically your data 0 or the green wire off of your reader. W1 is typically data 1 or the white wire off of your reader. The ground or drain wire from the reader should be connected to the ground on the IP bridge. Our DC-R provides 10 volt DC to the reader. The GR and red terminals are for future use to control the LEDs on the reader if needed. The BP terminal is for future use to control the beeper on the reader if needed. This is the back of a typical proximity reader. So we have our red and our black wires coming off the back which are our positive and negative voltage. Then there's some other wires that are used in conjunction in different ways with access control systems. Primarily what we're looking at is our communication, our data 0 and data 1. Our drain wire which we'll need to connect to our common. In the future, should we need to control the green or red LED or the beeper, we can tie those wires onto the IP bridge. So let's review our course objectives for the IP bridge install. We covered the typical installation tools needed for installing an IP bridge, i.e. the same tools that we need for a PowerNet reader controller install. Except, remember, an IP bridge is DIN rail mountable and it does only mount to a DIN rail. We covered the basic of wiring devices to the IP bridge. In this case, it's very similar to the PowerNet reader controller for our inputs and our outputs. Except here, we have to jumper power to the common side of our relay, and we have a Wiegand input for a proximity reader. And we covered the basic wiring of a proximity reader using its Wiegand interface. Typically, you'll just need the red and the black for your power, and the green and the white for your communication control. In the future, we'll be able to control the LED if needed and also the beeper. Thank you for attending this course and we hope it was beneficial to you. Thank you and have a great day.